Today I thought um, we would do something really simple and easy and um, something with, oh, let's say, um, Christmas in mind because uh, people are starting to say, can you do something Christmassy? And I can't wait. I love to do things for Christmas. I can't wait. The sooner we start, the better. So let's go for it. But you have to kind of get warmed up to it, don't you? And um, I've been practicing. I'll take these things out of the way and bring them back in a sec. Um, I've been practicing doing Christmas trees because I haven't painted a tree, a snowy tree, since last winter. So we'll do a tutorial on how to paint this kind of uh, snowy object uh, later on. But um, these aren't the easiest of trees to... Um, I, I'll get it right one day for sure. But anyway, that's, that's my take on it. But we'll do that another time. And then I was thinking, how can we really sort of simplify this? So I was playing around with a brush and some Kiritake paint and just did some, you know, triangles and made some ideas. And, and then I was sort of refining that a little bit and coming up with some of these sorts of designs. And, um, and then I thought, no, we need to go really right back to basics. And, and then I had a moment or two and I felt like a pine cone. We put a short up yesterday, I think, of a pine cone that I did last year. And I thought, I can do better than that. Let's hope my painting has improved a little bit since last year. So I just did that from memory last night. So I'm not sure whether I would say that was an improvement or not. But anyway, so I've been meandering through this and that, here and there. And I thought, I know what we'll do, something nice and easy. We'll do some gift tags because you can do those in a spare minute and it won't take very long. So what shall we do? So what I was thinking of doing is um, making a stencil and then doing some various assorted sort of, um, what do you call them? Um, whimsical trees and stuff. And I thought we'd do that. So anyway, I'm cutting out these stencils different sizes and I realized I was using a painting which I, I had put to one side as failed and it definitely was failed but then I thought oh my gosh you know there's a bit of a trend going on at the moment for um, trees that are made out of other things like fabric and printed paper and so on and so forth that people are making cards out of so I just put the triangles that I'd cut out there and I thought oh well that's a start so I'm going to start by doing a collage I'm going to do these three. I've, I've divided this piece of paper up into six. And there's a bit of spare there for practicing. Um, <clears throat> so then I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun, guys. If, if, if you, oh, God, could you help me get this off? Um, yeah, I'm having fun because that's what I need to do because, you know, oh, dear, it hasn't been a particularly good week health-wise. I'm not adjusting very well to my blood pressure tablets. And last night I was really dizzy and yuck in the evening and all night. So not very impressed with that. So I don't know. Anyway, I need to do something easy. So I'm going to cut out these triangles. I'm going to hope that this scotch glue stick will stick them on. And... Um, Probably won't, might need a bit more. Let's try that again. Do it a bit harder. Uh, that's it, that should stick. I like collage and it can be taken to a very, uh, what's the word, elevated level if you want. But we'll just do something like this. And then once you've stuck your bits of, because this is, this is quite nice this uh, thing that I'm gaily putting glue on the back of. Um, so anyway, yeah, no, we have a new prime minister. They didn't want me after all. Rishi Sunak, he's, uh, he's, he's, he has the honor, Mr. Sunak, of being the very first Chancellor of the Exchequer or politician. That's a Chancellor of the Exchequer. He's the one who looks for American ladies. That's that's the one who looks after the money, dishes out the money. He's the first politician who has ever in my whole entire life given me any free money. Just before the pandemic started, he was chancellor and he announced that everybody running a small business would be given 10,000 pounds, which is nowadays about 
and he literally gave us £10,000 to try to keep our business running. He must have known what was going to happen because the business collapsed in the end, but we still kept the £10,000. <coughs> so he, I'm really happy that he's Prime Minister in England now because maybe he'll give us £20,000. <laughs> you never know. Uh, you can only hope, can't you? So there we are, that's that. And now we're going to make that into trees. And I'm going to try to find some black. I think I'll make the... Shall I do the trunks in black? Like this. And just do them sort of whimsical and wonky. It's a good thing about whimsy. It means wonky. So we do that. I have no idea what direction to take. Over hillside or into the wood. But we're just going to go ahead. And um, I'll, I might talk about politics. I might not. I might talk about health. Um, might not. Um, so we'll put a star on the top, like that. There we are. And then you could, uh, you could go around the outside edge. You could leave it just like that. You could put a parcel beside the tree, I suppose. And maybe we'll do some snowflakes. Something like that. I think that needs to be coloured in. And then it probably needs to be inked around, I think, like the legs. There we are. Okay, something like that. Really easy. And then when you cut them out, you can round off the corners and you could put a gold line around the outside edge. So that's number one, a little collage made from a discarded painting that um, is no good to man or beast. Next, then, we will do a stencil one like this. Now, that's easy to do. You just take a, a little piece of card like this, let's say this one, and a pair of scissors, and just cut up from the bottom like that to open it up, doesn't matter about that, and then you cut here, 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 and here, and that gives you a triangle. And then we're going to do some spatter on that, so in order to protect the rest of the paper, I have my trusty paper towel with a square cut, a rectangle cut out of it, and then we're going to spatter on there. And um, you can do different kinds of spatter. You can do fine spatter, or you can do not so fine spatter. And I think, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to do this one in gold, because I've done lots in green. So I'm looking for my trusty toothbrush. This is very old and very trusty. They're not all the same, so if you find, if you find your toothbrush doesn't work at first, don't panic. Look for another one until you find the right one. I've got half a dozen here. So I've got that sort of smooshed up. It's a little bit on the green side because the last thing I used on this brush was green. Um, so it doesn't really matter because a little bit greenish doesn't matter, does it? And then you want to test it. So just grab something and make sure it's going to work. And then come in and just spray. Make sure you get into the edges. Spray your tree. Move the paper. Move the stencil and have a nice tree. And if you wanted to do lots of similar ones, um, you can do that. So you might, um, let me think, I was thinking of doing two, two 
side by side in different sizes, but I think I have to do one at a time. So we'll do that one first. Come back and embellish them in a minute. I won't put that one there because I need the space for my... I uh, don't want to touch. This is a really nice thing to do with kids because it looks stylish. You know, children have good taste these days, don't they? They're not, they're not into crepe paper and all that stuff. They, they like things to be stylish, don't they? So this is easy, it gets a good effect. You don't have to have any particular <clears throat> uh, dexterity, I would say. And uh, I want to put a smaller one here. And do a small one there. And uh, maybe we'll do this one in sort of green, darker green. So there's a little one, and uh, let's put a big one there. I should make that different colour. Let's make that one a really gold. These Kuretake starry colours are very good, They're very gold. When they dry, they look even more golden. And if you use a little bit more water like that, you can get more of a textured effect. If you use less water, then it's finer. I don't know what this is going to look like. Yeah, that's okay. Two, you might want to just dab that out. Okay, there's just so many different things that you could do um, once you start doing this kind of thing, you'll probably find your own inspiration takes over and you don't know where to stop um, because you can do so many things. You could do more of these triangles and you could add them. You know, you could easily cut out uh, another. This is a perfect piece of uh, failed art put with Christmas trees and you just could glue that one there and then take that ahead, go ahead with that. Um, is that one dry yet? I don't know, maybe I'll do that. Perhaps I like that. One of the other YouTubers that I like to watch, which is not an art one, she's craft, is um, uh, the lady who runs the paper, I think she calls it the paper outpost. And I've forgotten her name. I'm terribly sorry. I have. I can't remember. Is it, is it Julie or Susan? Somebody will tell me. I know. I, I, I know. I know. It, I know it. I just can't remember it. And she does. She works like this a little bit. She kind of just feels her way as she goes along. And I think that that's um, that's why I like watching her because she doesn't have any. Real, I, well, she doesn't seem as if she has a real plan before she gets started. Um, but it's interesting to watch and see how things develop with her, with her channel. <clears throat> All right, so then that one can go there. And you don't have to put the pots if you don't want to. You could leave them there, they're rooted. And you could just, I mean, I, I think most good trees deserve a star.
And you could, for example, you could just do a pot with no join and just make that deconstructed if you wanted to. Or you could do a curly line like that and just leave it like that. Then as I said, when you cut it out, you can put a line around the outside edge. And then um, <clears throat> this one down here, what could we do here? We could, no, I'll tell you what, this one. You could hang some balls or stars from the bottom like that. This one could have a little pot. thinking about <clears throat> doing something a little bit more spirally on the top there rather than and then you could give this tree character by doing something like that I've got a tune going around in my head. I don't know if any of the English guys out there um, watched the Detectorists um, on television a few years ago. Tamsin and I have just been re-watching it. It's about the fifth time I've watched it. It's my absolute favourite programme of all time. I really love it. I just love it for so many reasons. And it's got this very catchy theme tune and I, it's going through my head at the moment and I will spare you the pleasure of hearing me sing it because no <laughs> this is not the place for singing whoops i made a mistake with that star never mind i'm painting this drawing this using for this a piece of fabriano um <laughs> hot pressed 100 percent cotton watercolor paper what a scandal never mind you only live once there we are so that's that one and um, this one, I think I prefer the star on top. I like that. They can all have that in my book, star on top. And we could do here, what? what can we do? Let's grab the bronze pen. We could put some Let your imagination take flight. There we are. So I'm going to stop there. And um, I shall cut them out and come back to finish them off. So I finished all of these off. I did the other two in the same way as the first ones. And I decided to make a photocopy. This is just a, a colour photocopy. Um, decided to make a photocopy because I want to try out the idea of... I think I might... Something underneath that. Um, try out the idea of um, drawing a line around the outside edge of each of these things or some of them. So I'm going to cut this one up and try it out because I don't want to sort of make a mistake. So I'm just going to um, just try it out on, on the photocopy. So we'll just make, and you can cut them, probably eyeball them like that. And uh, and then cut them in half again this way, something like that. And, you know, there's a few things you could do. Obviously, you're going to punch a hole in the top there because this is a gift uh, tag. Or, you know, this design would work really well for a Christmas card as well. You could write a greeting on it or whatever you wanted to do. 
Um, and you can have fun beforehand by doing some wild and woolly painting um, that you don't care if it doesn't work out because you're going to use it for cutting up anyway. So um, I think I've got a few videos where things like that kind of happened. Things didn't kind of work out. <laughs> But what's work? What what does it mean to work out? And you could do this with a ruler, or you could use your own hand. And I think, see, I think that makes that look much more interesting. And we'll just put some more spirals on to indicate angels from the realms of glory. And this one I now see. I think that needs a pot. So I can make these adjustments on the photocopy and then we can go back and do what we want to the original. So that's one. And you could do the outside edge in copper like I, I did on this. This is a good set. You can come in a bit closer if you want. You can adjust the size as you go along. And then you would just Obviously, where's the ruler? Cut that off there. If you feel that the way that one worked out was a bit too wide, just do that. And then keep going with your line around the outside edge. Uh -huh. Or you can do it with a ruler and you would just the difference is that this is less organic, don't you think? And you're more likely to make a mistake in my opinion. I quite like it with the wonky lines. I definitely like it with the curved corners. So having tried it out like this, you know, I would then say to myself, nah, nah, don't like that. I like that. I like that better. Don't like this. What could you do? You have to round them off. Yes. So, so no, not straight lines, nice wonky lines. No. You could, honestly, to tell you the truth, if you've got a photocopier that would do it, you could make one set of these, photocopy it onto some decent paper, a little bit thicker than this, this is just ordinary paper, and you'd have a whole set of, um, let's do this one. <clears throat> oh, there's a smaller one. Well, anyway, you get the message. I'm gonna stop now. So there's the original, which I haven't yet cut out. I will do, but I'll probably make some more photocopies, as I said, because I think I might use those for my uh, tags for this year, get things done in advance. And another thing you could do, of course, is you could take one of your pre-folded cards or make one, and you could take one of your photocopies or your original. And if you just glue that into the center of a card like that, obviously you're going to get a very nice little greetings card, just room for happy Christmas underneath there like that. So if any of your um, trial ones turn out really well, um, you can turn it into something that's worthy of giving to your best friend, I think, don't you? I've got another Christmas card for you today. Um, I know everyone's getting down to it now and uh, getting, cracking on with all those Christmas cards. Um, so I want to give you a bit of a hand with that. Now, this is a, a painting I did a while ago. This was a, a tutorial, which was um, fun to do, I must admit. And uh, I was thinking, what can I do today to make this a bit more Christmassy? These are the different uh, ideas for the sheep that we had before. And um, so I was thinking, okay, I have, a, I have a thought. It's only taken me three days to come up with this. It usually takes me about three days of thinking before I finally decide what I'm going to do for um, these tutorials. I go through a hundred different ideas and I try out several different things. Um, which maybe I'll come back to and maybe I won't. But anyway, so what I'm going to do today is the following. Um, I've got my Kuretake set of paints here. 
which um, I think will be perfect for, for this um, little project, uh, just because they're very clean and they, well, they're not very clean, actually. They're quite dirty, aren't they? But in you know what I mean. Um, they're all starting to shrink away from the edges. Don't worry about that. It won't make any difference to the quality of them, but they are all starting to shrink, um, but it doesn't seem to affect anything. What was I going to say? Um, ba -da 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 -da. Oh, yes. So, yeah, they're good. They dry the same color as they are when you put them on, pretty much. I'm going to use a, and you could use any paints, by the way. You don't have to use these ones. If you happen to have them, brilliant. If you don't use anything, it doesn't matter. Um, I've got a piece of um, uh, hot pressed Fabriano um, Classico, I think this is. Fabriano hot press paper. Hot press because it's much easier to draw on when you're using a pen um, than, than the cold press. Cold press, cold pressed paper tends to be a bit rough. And um, for, for this, I think um, this will be fine. So this is 11 inches wide. I've drawn a line to divide it and I'm going to fold it in half to make a Christmas card, which will be five and a half inches wide by... Um, Da, 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 seven inches, is it? Seven and a half inches high, five inches wide, five and a half, no, yeah, five and a half inches wide. Um, but any size will do. This is just what I happen to have. Um, it seems like a, a big enough size to be able to draw on uh, with comfort for the number of things that are going to be on here, um, but not, not too huge. So um, I've got a um, micron, pigma micron, pen here. This is a 0.2 size nib, not too thick, not too heavy. And I'm just literally, you can get the sketch for this um, from the website for free if you um, don't feel like sketching it yourself. And I'm just going to literally outline the tree that's going to be behind my sheep. And then I'm going to paint that in a sec. So then we're going to draw the sheep before we um, paint them this time. So going to do an oval for the head, two long extended ovals for the ears, and the eyes on a sheep are always very close to the top of the head, and then the best way to do the face of a sheep to make it look cute is just two, I'll show you again in a sec, just two sort of U-shapes, and then we're just going to give them two legs because if you put four legs in, it seems to be a painting all about legs. So we'll put another oval. It's just, just an oval. It doesn't have to be regular. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just whatever you think. And she's having a good look at her. And two ears and some curly hair on top. Then the, the nose is like that. Then the mouth is like that. So my sheep don't look quite like that, but not far off. And then we just start the please, right at the top, just under the ears. has to be really high up, otherwise they look like goats. Um, and then this one, maybe, maybe she's got her head turned a little to the left a little bit. So we'll have an eye there and an eye there. And she's, she's saying, oh my God, what is it with those two? She's got her ears and her curly top. And you can have fun with these. Do whatever uh, floats your boat. Okay, then we've got their little legs like that. She looks a bit cross, but we'll give her some eyelashes so she won't look cross anymore. And adjust the shape of her eyeballs and things. She can have some eyelashes too. And this one as well. There we go. And uh, I'm going to put some scarves on these. So she's going to have a nice woolly scarf around her neck like that. Hanging down in front. And this one's going to have something similar, but the, the knot is going to be at the side like that. And she's going to have a fringe hanging down there. And this one is wearing, she's got a cowl on because she's she's fashionable, this one. Don't forget their knees. There we are. 
And so then we just stand them on the ground a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and paint them. We'll start with the tree, get that out of the way because we want to put some decorations on that at the end. So we'll just pick up, and I'm going to use this colour here, which is called forest green, which seems appropriate. So I'm going to use that for the tree and just test that out to make sure that's not too heavy. And we'll just pop that in and I'm going to keep the edges overlapping my line. I don't want to stick inside the lines. We're just going to keep it nice and loose. Working quickly. And we keep it so that it's um, lighter on one side than on the other, just because it looks better. And just use your brush to indicate the direction of the branches. You don't need to do much more than that because we will be painting over it a little bit with the decoration. So we just, just make it nice and light like that. And then the next thing to do is to paint the sheep. And um, you can do it whatever way you like, but I think probably I'm going to paint their bodies first. And I'm thinking of keeping, keeping the bodies neutral. I've got this colour here, which is in, this is the beauty of the Kuretake set. It has all these nice colours already mixed up for you. So although you can mix them from your ordinary set, if you've got a set of other paints, um, this is a, a, a big time saver. So it's a really big time saver for me. Um, but you're probably not in quite such a, a rush as I am. Well, I'm not really in a rush. Um, anyway, so I'm going to do them in, in sort of neutrally pinkish kinds of shades. This one's going to be slightly different. So like that. And then maybe um, the one on the end, what are we going to do? I'll give her sort of a little bit more creamy colour. Uh, like that. Don't worry about going over the lines. Like I said, she's supposed to be slightly pinker. She's slightly beige. Yes, I'm not going to give these ones horns, um, but we will give them some legs. So my sheep have black, mostly black legs, so we'll just give them some grey because we're doing this in a sort of pastel shades, aren't we? Apparently, as it looks like. You never know quite what's going to happen when you start painting. I just put a little bit of shadow on the ground underneath them. So we'll call that... Um, snow uh, and then right what do we need to do next uh the scarves scarves next but mm, yes now what color shall we do the scarves this is a good question i'm going to give i'm going to give this one what am i going to give her i'm going to give her pink spots or sort of Something that might look like it was flowers on her scarf. You can do whatever you like. Or maybe I'll just colour it in and, and it'll just have some texture like that. Looks warmer that way, doesn't it? Yeah. And... Um, this one here on the left, what should we do with her? Should we give her, should we stick with the same sort of colour? I don't know, it's really hard. Maybe a bit pinker. Very difficult to decide actually. And maybe this one will be a bit darker. I don't know. There we go. Okay, so then on the Christmas tree, um, first of all, I think we need my pencil. I think that's dry, yeah. It's not a pencil. And we just put some more, just a little tiny bit of texture in there for the shape of the tree. And um, 
Oh yes, I forgot something. Little pink cheeks on the sheepy sheep sheeps. And we need to put some decoration on these here sheep. And uh, I was thinking, um, I was thinking, what was I thinking? There's different things you could do. You could, could do them in gold. I think gold would be nice. Perhaps, perhaps what we'll do is we'll give this one some of these. I quite liked this when I did this last time. These little, I think that looks quite stylish. Don't want them to look too tacky because they're quite fashion conscious sheep, these ones. And uh, there we are, so that's okay, isn't it? I put a little, um, little bit of, a little bit of gold hair. And this one, um, I sort of want to do snowflakes, but um, I think snowflakes are probably a little bit too complicated. So maybe, should we do little white stars or something like that? Something subtle. Oh yeah, and I tell you what, I'm going to put some, just a few dots on her jump on her on her scarf. Yeah, and this one on the end here, she's going to have hearts. Just a few. There we are, and now we need to decorate the tree. So we just put some gold balls on there, shall we? Not too many. Just a few, and then I need a star on top. So there we are. One sheep Christmas card, and um, we can... Have a look at that a bit more closely and see what you think. I think there's lots of variations there. <coughs> Here are my practice ones that I did earlier. Different, <coughs> different ideas, different ways of doing it until I finally came up with what I actually wanted to do. So um, fold that in half. I'll do that in a minute and um, it's ready to go. You could write a nice message up here. If you wanted to, you could of course put a bit of spatter on there and some gold spatter or something like that for snow whatever otherwise i think that's fine just a quickie today um it's tuesday it's wild and woolly day out there today and um, i am going to just do a couple of whimsical birds um, when i was in england earlier on in the year i did these ones here and i'm going to show you i think hopefully more or less how I did those. I'll try and keep it quick because, uh, you know, uh, it's lunchtime basically. So, right, let's do blue, shall we? Um, this is, I'm using the Kiritaki set here. I'll move that one over there a little bit. And uh, let's see, let's see, what did I do? I had a blue, I had blue. So let's start with, and the way I do these whimsical birds is, it's actually um, quite scary in a way because I never know what's going to happen, but I just start. So we will put some turquoise in there too, and then let's bring his tail up there. I'll go back and look at what I did. And... Uh, a little bit more blue here and what we're going to do is we're just going to let that run a little bit that's bird number one and bird number two was a kind of robin so we gave him a bit of a pink breast like that 
And then we had darker red, darker red, sort of purpley wings. And then number three was green in the middle, greenish. And then sort of rusty brown on the outside. So his tail comes up here like that. His head's over here. This purple is too purple. You can always lift off the colour if you want. If you're not happy with it. Can you hear my dog snoring in the background? Mm. And then I think time for the legs in a second. So we're just, let me see what colour have I got here. That's sort of, there we go, nice brownish colour there. And here too, it's different when you put it on top of another colour. And then we want a sort of greeny blue on the back here and he's going to have a little beak up here okay so then we need to do the legs i'm going to sit down Birds always have fairly long legs. They don't always sit up on their legs, but they um, they tend to be... Ooh, what have I done there? That would be good for doing eyes and things. Anyway, put in his fingernails. Uh, okay. Just let the serendipity take over. Never try, she said, telling herself, never try to copy something you've already done. Because it won't work. It's always going to be a little bit different. So what I did before, I will use the same technique. What I did before was I used my uh, this is a um, Stettler um, carat aquarelle brush uh, pencil. Let's see what did we do for his. Beak, a little beak like that. And then the eyes very close together. The reason I wanted to do this again was because I did it while I was in England on holiday and um, didn't film myself doing it. Where's his beak going to be? His beak's going to be either up there or down here, I think. If we put it there, he looks as if he's a little bit concerned. This is Derwent Aquarel watercolour pencil, and I like to use them really loosely. When it hits damp paper, it really shows up very well, so suits my sketchy personality. Okay, now having got to that point, we're going to want, ooh, I don't know why the black is so very intense. Just put a little bit more brown on the back of this one, I think. I'm 
maybe this one too. Too bright, too dark. He needs a red chest, doesn't he? Okay, drying time. So now they're dry and we're going to do the embellishment. So first thing really is to do some white around the eyes. Like that. And um, well, I think To be a little bit darker. So, okay, so what we're going to do with our white pen, usually when you see these, um, what would you call them, um, whimsical birds, the embellishments are um, in black. But I, I quite like to do the outside line, so the outside shape in a sketchy sort of black, and then the actual squirrels and things in white. You can do whatever you like, though. As long as you don't try too hard to do it perfectly. Okay, and then this one. What shall we do? What did I do before? The weather's gone terrible, and you can hear the rain, I think. Everybody gets very, um, all the dogs, the cats, everybody gets a little bit weird when it rains like this. Very windy. I'm sure you have the same thing where you are, and they all start behaving very strangely. So there we are, there's that one, and then this one. And we have to wait to the end of this one for the surprise ending. Here comes Arthur rushing in out of the rain. He blames us. I think he thinks we do it to him on purpose.
need a little bit more ink there than this is willing to give up. There we go. Okay, I think probably we'll leave this one like that. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to do is just as a sort of little nod to Christmas, because he's coming, isn't it, soon? We will give them a crown. three gold crowns and when that's dry we'll be able to put some jewels on maybe just pick up some nice rubies and sapphires And hmm, emeralds. For the crowns. Today we're going to do a little design that I've been working on for a while now, which would be ideal for a Christmas card, a place card, a tag, uh, just a little, you know, message at Christmas, anything like that. Really simple, easy to do, and um, basically just a bit of fun. We're just going to do some baubles with some snowflake patterns and a sort of little Christmassy motif on it. And um, what I'm going to be using today, I'm just uh, using the little um, china palette that I've got here. It comes from a company called Meadon, I think, um, which I got on Amazon. It's in my shop if you want to go and have a look at it. Uh, really useful. I use this an awful lot. And I use my tube paints and I just put the colours that I want to use most often. And for this time of year, I have found that these are the colours that I tend to go to in order to achieve something which is a little bit uh, Christmassy like this. And uh, what I've got here, just to run through the colours, um, I've got my um, uh, quinacridone gold, which I usually can't manage without that, I find is my basic yellow. I've also got cadmium yellow here, or another yellow would do. This is cobalt blue, a nice clean blue. Turquoise blue there, which I find is very useful for making interesting shades of green when you're doing leaves. Sap green, which is the basis of most greens too. This is Windsor uh, violet here, quinacridone violet would do, or something similar to that. Cadmium orange, and here we've got scarlet or cadmium red and alizarin crimson. So a warm and a cooler uh, red. So those are the colors that I have available to me and I can make most things happen with those. I've also got my Astari Colours set here from Kiritaki. Um, definitely needed that for Christmas. Everyone needs one of those. <laughs> I've got my um, the Sigma Uniball gel pens here. Probably only going to use the white. Um, so they are at the ready. Um, the, way, the white ones, when you use them, don't press too hard because if you press hard, then the paint, the ink doesn't come out. Um, and my brush is a number seven um, round pointed brush. This one's got a nice point on it. I'm using a Maestro from Drawwell. You can also use their number 
uh, 11-2, which is not quite so pointed as this one, but it does the job fine and um, extremely ex inexpensive. You can get those direct from Japan if you want. Uh, paper, I've been practicing this morning on, um, this is a Labis Fidelis from Arches, which is smooth on one side and slightly <clears throat> textured on the other. Um, this is just um, Etival, uh, Clairefontaine Etival paper, which is fine, it's good. It's not got so much character, but it's absolutely fine for practicing, which is what I was doing. Uh, trying to follow my own advice, practice on cheap paper, then try it out on something a bit more expensive. See if you can see the difference. And for this version, I'm going to use my book of um, Hanamula bamboo mixed media paper. I always find it very difficult to make my mind up. And then I mess the paper up by putting paint on it from my mucky fingers. But... Um, if it's decent paper, you can always wash it off. So, yeah. Now, if you aren't particularly confident at drawing circles, um, then just find yourself a nice convenient lid like this, something nice and round, and you can just draw around it. And that's a really good idea. And uh, I should probably do that, actually, because, you know, whilst I can do these things when nobody's watching me, it's much harder when I'm recording. Um, so let's just do it that way, shall we, to be on the safe side. Oh, find a pencil. Um, and you can arrange the baubles however you like. I think I would suggest putting them on the paper before you do the leaves. So we'll just go around that like that. And uh, so there's bauble number one. And then we want one slightly bigger. So this will be number two. Just slightly bigger, I think this one is. Yep, you can always rub the lines out afterwards. Um, maybe we'll use that one again for this one behind. And uh, then we want another one over here, which is going to be... You can vary the sizes more than this if you want. But uh, let me think. I might make a smaller one there. Let's see if this is smaller. Yeah, that's a tiny bit smaller. So that's what I wanted. So we'll put that one up here. And then another one down here, and I want that one to be even smaller still. So this is this is the advantage of having loads and loads of bottles of this and that lying around all over the place. Plenty. Mm, that one's too small. Plenty of options for lids. Um, that'll do. I think. Oh yeah, that would be fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put some greenery along the top and along the bottom like that. And that's all we need to do for the minute. And now we have to decide on what colours we're going to use. And um, it's... Uh, I did a few different options. I did red and green, traditional colours. I did something in subtle greens and blues a bit more stylish and then I did these ones in in blues that was the first one actually but I think I'm going to go with the traditional um, color scheme because I'm a traditional girl at heart and I'm going to mix up here some I'm going to mix some quinacridone gold with some cadmium red and the reason for that is I want it to be reasonably um, strong I'm just going to rub out that line there because that might show through. The lines around the outside edges will either disappear or we'll be able to get rid of them after it's dry. So 
So we just fill this with red. Doesn't matter if your hand shakes a bit and it goes a bit wonky. And I'm just going to put a bit of um, Windsor Violet or Quinacridone Violet, whichever one you have. I'm just going to feed that in as well, especially on one side to make it a little bit darker on one side and leave it a little bit lighter on the other side. And then let that run. And then I think maybe we'll do this one in a kind of mauve. Well, it's obviously quinacridone or Windsor. I think it's the same. Let's just call it different things. I think. Although, I'm just going up as close as I can to the red one because I don't want to wait for it to dry. And if I touch it, obviously it will run. So we'll try not to do that. So I'm just putting a little bit more darker. So I'm gonna pick up a bit of blue Mix that with the quinacridone violet and then drop that in on that side also to give just a hint of three dimensionality. Just make it more powerful. This one is, I hope, going to be a little bit darker than the other ones that I did earlier. Now, um, the next one I'm going to do in gold, so I'm be swapping to my um, what do you call them? Starry colours. I'm going to have to get some more of this soon. I was saying to Tamsin the other day, it's very rare for me to actually finish up a whole pan of paint. You know the little half half pans that you get in a, a paint set because I tend not to. Um, paint from pans, the traditional small sizes, a bit too small for my style. So I tend to use, because I tend to use tubes and only use the pans when I'm painting on holiday or traveling or whatever, or in the studio, because I know a lot of people do like pans because they're convenient. They don't take up much space. Anyway, what am I rambling on about now? Uh, Hardly, I, I don't know, I can't remember ever having finished up a whole pan, a half pan, <laughs> ever. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm painting these two in gold. I'm sure I have, but I don't remember. Painting these two in gold. I should have done. I've been painting since I was a child, and that's 60 years ago now. Um, I'm painting these in starry gold. Two different shades. This is more of a... Uh, I don't know, white gold or something. Like white gold looks like silver, doesn't it? It's like platinum. Oh, it's a platinum necklace, this is. Oh, it looks like silver to me. Whatever. And then I'm going to use what's on my brush and mix it in with some of the red just to paint this one in a sort of uh, goldeny, golden red kind of thing. You could do all of them like that if you wanted to. You could uh, mix starry colours into any colour and you'll get a sort of metallic luster. So there we are, there's our four balls, five. Um, <laughs> this paper is nice. It seems to keep the colour on top, doesn't soak it up too much, and that's a good thing. Let's put that out of the way there. And now I'm going to um, mix some dark green. And I've got sap green here, which on its own, as I said, isn't dark enough for the greenery. So I'll pick up some quinacridone violet or Windsor violet, mix that with the green 
and a touch of turquoise. And then I'll just test that uh, on my test sheet here. That's fine. Okay, now I will move that out of the way. And um, what I'm going to do is, using the point of the brush, just going to try to reasonably and have to be perfect narrow line like that I won't do the one down the bottom yet because I need to I'll get a hand in it if I uh, if I paint it and don't use it and then I'm going to put some little pointed leaves on here and uh, I'm going to do them by pressing down on the side and then on the other side and the thing is when you are doing this kind of work when you're doing anything any kind of painting and you're using a different sheet of paper, you will find sometimes that it doesn't behave quite the way you expected. So you have to adjust what you're doing. If you were painting on smooth paper, you'd have a different effect. So I'm not one to look for perfection or tidiness. I think when people say, oh, I'm such a perfectionist, I think sometimes what they mean is they like everything to be tidy and even and without flaw or variation. And that's not particularly like nature, is it? Because the beauty of nature is the variety and the um, un unevenness. You know, a beautiful sky is not tidy. A beautiful garden shouldn't really be tidy. Anyway, do whatever you want. If you want it to be tidy, let it be tidy, but don't stress about it. Whatever you do, let it be fun. And just go with the flow. So there we are, there's the top one. And the um, question is now, shall I do, I think I'll just do the, the berries next. So we'll just pick up some nice bright red and we're going to give each little, oops, trying not to touch the leaves. Just mop that up and then I can put some green on top of that when that's dry. I think I've got a little bit too much wet there, so we'll just dry that off a bit. And just draw some berries. Where would we be at Christmas time without berries, eh? Make them different sizes. I've got to put them kind of evenly all along. I would say something like that. I woke up last night dreaming about bells, Christmas bells, and I thought to myself, oh, I really should do a painting of some Christmas bells because I haven't seen anyone doing that before. And uh, to me, Christmas and the, you know, going to midnight mass and all that kind of thing was always part of Christmas when I was young. And then we left England and went to live abroad and it didn't ever seem to quite be the same. But then that's made mostly imagination because, you know, as you get older, things change, don't they? Anyway, um, the bells, yes, I remembered that when I was at school and we had our art lessons and I was 10, 11, I remember one year there was a competition um, for designing a Christmas card and I wanted to uh, enter this competition at school and I was desperate to paint some bells. I had this idea in my head of two bells and some holly and stuff like that. I remember working on it for ages and ages and ages and it never came out quite right. So I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about that and thinking I'm going to do some bells with holly and all that. 
as a tutorial soon, but not today. So watch out for that. <laughs> Couldn't get the shape of the bell right. I probably still won't be able to get the shape of the bell right. There we are, so that's our berries. I hate having to wash my brush out and waste all that paint. You want to carry on painting, don't you? Let me put the green back in that one, like that. All right, quit going over with the hair dryer, and I think that's dry now. And uh, we might be able to risk erasing lines on the outside here. Just be really careful. When the Kuretake Starry Colour paint is dry, it's much brighter, shinier than it is when it's wet. So have faith when the first time you use it. Don't, um, don't worry if it seems not to be bright because it does definitely go shinier as it gets dry. Marvellous things, these paints. I'm really very uh, lucky to have such lovely Christmassy colours. Okay, that will have to do. I just brush that off with my shaving brush. And gold to tie the balls, first of all, to the uh, bow. And I'm going to do it very casually like that. Let me just come up here, straight up behind the leaf. Let me do that. And this one. I haven't got far to go. This one, like that, and this one. Like that. So now they're all in place. And then at this point, now you've got lots of choices to do. Um, I was thinking of snowflakes. Poor dog down the hill, still tied up day after day. I've reported her twice now, the neighbour, to the equivalent of the RSPCA here. They phoned me and said, oh, well, we will come out, but don't know when. And I think that dog is going to go crazy. OK, so when you're doing a snowflake, they have six points. And it's a little bit tricky because you have to find the middle, draw a line, and then divide it as evenly as you can into six, like that. It doesn't matter if it's a bit off, uh, as mine always inevitably are. I should measure it. I should get a compass out. Shouldn't I, Tamsin? But I don't. So we're just doing some decoration on here, which is reminiscent of um, snowflakes. I'm not going to say these are perfect. At least they do have six points, and that's the key thing, really. Um, let me think, what shall we do here? We could do a shape like that. And then we can make them what you might call just embellished. So it's snowflake theme, I think I would tend to say for that. And uh, same for this one. We're going to come down and we're going to go across in the middle and across there. And we're going to hope that 
Nobody minds if they're a bit weird. I do find that dog very disturbing. Poor thing. We've been taking her for a walk when we can, but the woman doesn't like me to do it. She gives me the finger if she sees me anywhere near her place. And so I've been going out there and it's, I don't think it's helped my blood pressure, to be quite honest. Having confrontations with a neighbour over her abuse of a dog is not exactly what you'd call um, calming. But I'm not the kind of person who can sit by and just ignore something like that, so I don't know how we're going to resolve it yet. But it will be resolved. The, um, the problem is here in France, the, a lot of people tie their dogs up outside. Okay, changing the subject. One final snowflake. And I'm going to, on this one, just do completely non-snowflake emblems. Just anything, whatever comes to mind, whatever comes out the end of your brush or pen or mouth. There we are, so that will do for now, I think. And then one last thing here is we're going to pick up some dark gold on the paintbrush. I can get it to... And then we'll just put some nice wavy lines on these coloured ones here. And this one wants to be more silvery, so we'll go for the lighter. I think it does. Does it? Or does it want to be really dark? Let's see. Well, that works. That's okay. I think. Compromise, do both. There we are. Okay, and you could, if you wanted to, um, come into the leaves and just put some veins in the centre of the leaf symbols. Just to make them look perhaps a little bit more finished off. Optional. When you use these pens, make sure you don't press too hard. I mentioned that before, but just in case you missed it, only press lightly, hardly press at all and then you'll find that they'll work better. So there we are. Oh, I'll tell you what I do want to do. I want to put a little bit of gold on this one. I want to put some gold around the outside edges here. Lots of dots. It's a dotty theme. Okay, so there we are. Interesting design. I think it would work very nicely for a little card. I'm just going to draw a circle um, because I'm going to um, Draw a circle really lightly if I can find a pencil. And I'm going to just go round. I'm not quite sure yet until I pick up my brush whether I'm going to fill the circle or go round the circle. I think I might fill it. You see what I mean. So, um, ooh, so organized. Yes, so I can just about see that. So I've got a circle here. And I'm going to try out as many of these uh, paints as is reasonable, I think. I'm just looking for a small brush. I'm going to use a small brush. I don't like using small brushes usually, but I'm going to use a small brush this time because um, um, this paint box is, you know, uh, small. So not my style normally. So I'm going to go for olive green which is uh, which is um, next to this one. That's this one, right? So it's 
just pick up a bit of olive green and put it there. And I'm going to also pick up a bit of cadmium orange. And then I'm going to start with a leaf. Let's see how this goes. Maybe I'll add a bit of red. And maybe I'll add a bit of blue. This is one smaller. So that's kind of made a grey because I've got green, blue and red there all together. Um, Pick up a bit of red and we'll just do some some berries. Add some darker. Oh, that's pink. Don't really like that very much. And then we might want some some dark on the edge of the berries to give them some shadow. And maybe some narrow stems. Maybe we'll do some darker berries here. And then uh, let's go back to green. And I think we need something really dark in here. So I'm just going to put some very small. There's nothing wrong with this paper. I have no idea what it is, like I said, but we will be using it. I don't think there's anything wrong with this paper anyway. Um, just put the stems in so that they can join on to the wreathy thing. And you want, when you're doing something like this, what you want to do is keep a good variety of colors. So don't just paint all the leaves green. That's not a very good idea. Um, you need to vary it all and make it um, I'm looking for a good red here. I'm not sure about that. I think I put a bit of blue in it. They're very, very strong, these colors, very strong. Okay, that's not too bad. Put a nice flower there in sort of mauvey color like that, perhaps. And I think probably need one up here. Maybe a dash in there. And if you use a little um, palette like this, you keep this thing clean because it, it'll be ruined. Otherwise, I'll tell you what I'm missing here is quinacridone gold, which um, isn't in the set. They know it never is. So if I'm going to want quinacridone, 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 eh? I'm going to have to. Um, Go to my other set, which is always at hand. <clears throat> and um, so then let's have something, some nice brown berries here, perhaps. And then maybe we'll carry on around this line here. Which we'll put a brown leaf and uh, Oh, 
I think we're getting around that side there, coming up towards wanting some some red. So I'm going to put some small red berries in there. And uh, where was the, that was the indigo, wasn't it? something a bit green. Now, this one was weak, wasn't it? I'm going to need another mixing palette, just a sec. Very weak. If we mix a little bit of um, this uh, Naples yellow, no, yes, Naples in with it, we can get um, a nice pink. Could put some pink up here too. And then maybe some more green. And I'm going to put some more of this colour up here. some brown seed heads or fruits or something but yeah probably more likely fruits and dark brown like that and I think we need some more red now bright red so we we'll come back into the scarlet here And let me think. Green and all these colors are working. I haven't tried out any of the yellows yet, have I? Let's uh, put in a couple of yellows. But I'm tending towards the oranges a bit more, but trying to keep away from the opaque oranges. I'm going to pop the leaf in there because being right-handed, I'm coming around the side here, finding it a little bit awkward. I'll just drop some dark brown into that orange. And let me think, what shall we do next? I'm not taking too long thinking about this because I don't want this to be a super long video. And um, we're gonna put another one of these reddish things down here. We'll make this one a little bit darker. That could have a bit more dark in it, so could that one. And then I'm going to want Kind of greyish green leaves or well, blue. Let's put some blue in there. That's better. Uh, 
and a little bit of greenish orange. And I'm keeping all the leaves the same kind of shape, just to give a little bit of harmony, because there's a lot of colour, a lot of colour. I like that pink I made with the, um, this flesh tone, I would call that, and this weak violet, which is very weak, very weak, but it's actually going to probably turn out to be, oddly enough, one of my favourite colours because it makes a very soft pink, which is actually quite hard to achieve. I think we're going to use that one a lot. And let's put some grey in here. Put some fine stems. It's, it's a nice brush because it does allow you to paint really fine lines and we want some more berries here, perhaps some orange ones. Put some up here too. And perhaps a little bit of grey in here. And when that's dry you can go around and just kind of tweak it. I think probably before I stop, we're going to put some orange, some, something to balance that over here. So nice bright orange berries coming out to the side there. And I think probably that will do for now. Today we're going to, I'm going to paint um, some baby birds on some branches with holly. So I've done a little sketch, something like this. It's another painting, I'm going to do that next. Um, done this little sketch, got one, two, three birds there. And on the one I want to do, I'm going to do four. And the question is whether to put the branches in first and then put the birds on, or do the birds first and then put the branches in. It's always difficult to know which way to go. And I still don't know. So. Oh well, let's go for it. Let's put a bird in the middle. So we're basically doing a circle with two little wings and a little floofy tail. And then because he's a baby bird, he has his little eyes here and his little beak there. And he's going to have his tail is here. Yes, don't give him two tails down. And that's it really. And then he's going to have two little feet as you do. And I'm not going to put any more detail on there. Just leave it like that. And he needs a branch. So let's grow him a branch. Oh, thank you, he says. I've got something to stand on now. Could we have a little twig coming out this way, perhaps? I'd like a bit of holly, he says. Quite like another bit. Okay, that's good. Can I have a friend, please? Okay, let's take this branch up here and we're going to have a little twig coming out to the side there. Obviously we need more holly and more berries. We put up a short yesterday, Tamsin does these shorts, and she called it Watch Holly, Enjoy Holly Playing in her shorts or something like that. Got a lot of views, don't know why. So we're going to put a ball on the tree there, a little ball like that. Maybe we'll put two. There we are. And um, 
So we we'll just grow some more leaves here. We've had the most fabulous holly this year in our garden. We've never seen anything like it before. The amount of leaves, uh, not leaves, berries. Look at that. I've never seen holly like this before with all this number of leaves. That's more normal. And that's what we've had this year on some of the twigs. I don't know if it's because we had such a long, hot, dry summer. I'm not quite sure why that would have happened, but it did. Um, okay, so that's right. So we've got berries here. It's beautiful. And the birds are going to be really happy because there's so many berries for them to eat. Right, so now we're going to put another baby bird up here. And uh, give him a floofy tail out here. And his little beak is there, and his eyes. And his little feet. And a wing. I don't know if you've visited our um, new website yet, but uh, if you pop over there, you can get all these sketches for free, as you probably know. Okay, so this is going over here now. This piece of holly is growing. And uh, we have another ball hanging here. Another twig coming down here. Bit more holly. Always the necessary berries. And then one more little birdie. I don't know if these are robins or what they are. But he's over here. Nice round body. Goofy tail. Little beak. Little eye. Little wing. Little feet. So all baby birds. And his holly is underneath him here. And the painting part of this is going to be probably the quickest part of the whole thing. One, two, three, four, five balls. We could put more balls if we wanted to, but I think that's probably enough for the minute. So now we're going to paint it. And I'll be using a reasonably small brush um, I would say probably, no, not that one. Is that the same? No, that's, what's that? That's a seven. That's a seven. Where's it gone? That one, one that's down on that five, is it? Yeah, a five. A size five round, probably big enough. It's going to be a very sketchy little painting. Sketchy in the sense of, uh, like a sketch, yeah? Not sketchy in the sense of not very good. Not, well, it might not be very good. It's hard to say, really. I need a piece of paper to test on. Test, right. Okay, that's pink. I'm going to put little pink hints on the chests, and you can decide whether they're robins that have been in the wash, for example, or whether they're chickadees or uh, unripe cardinals. Three birds, there we are. And the, um, and the gray, this, this set's nice because it has this lovely soft gray that you can just wash out like that. And then we can just put in little gray 
okay head. This is going to be a delicate painting. I wanted to do delicate baby birds. And I've added a little bit of violet to the grey there. A wing. It's a very, very good opportunity to not go inside the lines. Don't, don't keep inside the lines. You know, keep, keep it, make it easy for yourself. There we are, that's those. And just need a quick slurp. Do you like my mug? This is one of our custom mugs. It's got one of my paintings on the side. It's a bit big for me, but uh, I know, well, a lot of people like big mugs. Okay, so let us find some green. What green shall we use? Shall we use a nice, uh, holly green with a little bit of grey in it just to make it a little bit less pungent and uh, don't forget to you know mix and match don't uh, don't keep it all the same all the way through don't stand inside the lines keep away from the edge we want it to be lively don't we All sorts of different kinds of greens. There is a million greens to choose from in the world. Some people say they don't like green, but how can that be? And there are so many different ones. And then the holly berries. I think I would say this is probably the nearest colour. So we'll just pop in the berries. And when you're done, if you want to add a few more to give a bit more of a, you know, sharpen it up a bit. Sometimes you have really orange berries actually on holly, sort of this kind of color. I don't know why they vary, but this year they're very dark red. It's like the apple crop here this year has been amazing. The best apples I've ever seen, huge in the shops and also on the trees around and about. Quite amazing. It's just what the weather does when it goes bonkers. So um, now uh, this piece of paper is too full of colour, so I'll get rid of that. And use this. I'm going to paint the baubles red, I think. You can do them whatever colour you want. Possibly red is a bit more festive. And then the only thing we need to do now is to paint the branches, which I'm going to do in a soft brown, so that's burnt sienna mixed with this grey. You see how I'm using the tester sheet as a palette. I can actually pick paint up from there. After I've tested it out, I don't have to waste it. I can go into that, pick it up off the piece of paper because I'm only using a tiny amount of paint for these branches. And we're keeping them really loose. I think we need some more holly leaves up there. I think I'll have a look at it in a second when I've finished. Painting that. Um, I think we probably want a little bit more uh, grey on the birds. Just bring it up a little bit. I just thought it would be nice to do birds in 
grey rather than brown. It's all these, you know, little brown jobbies. Um, just grab my pen again. I'm going to put a couple more bits of holly up here. And a few more berries, perhaps. Okay, and if they're dry, why wouldn't we come in with some gold? Mm, not sure about gold, it doesn't show up enough. Let's do white. Just a little bit of embellishment there. Then, if you're not completely convinced about your leaves, maybe you want to just darken some parts. So, for example, the centers where the dark part is. So, you can either do them really, really simply, sketchy, nothing exciting. You could paint them in detail if you want, but it's just the idea. And there we are, basically. There we are, one little sketch. Today I'm going to paint a, a rather big um, three Christmas stocking painting. So imagine just behind these stockings there's a fireplace and um, log fire roaring there, crackling and doing everything. And in front of it are the three stockings that were hung up last night for Father Christmas and they've been invaded by mouse as mice, as you can see. Um, anyway, so we like mice, so it doesn't matter if they're eating the cookies and the candy canes and everything, because everyone should get to enjoy Christmas, shouldn't they? Including the mice. So I'm working on a piece of, excuse my printer going mad in the background. I'm working on a piece of Etcher, uh, 140 pound watercolour paper, it says hot press, but it isn't, it must have been a mistake in the production factory. And then I'm going to be using um, possibly three brushes. This is a um, seven, a five and a three draw well round from Japan. I find these very good brushes, you can get them direct from Japan. Uh, the information's in the description below. And um, I have uh, drawn this picture and um, I'm going to paint it and then I'll trace it and it'll be available for you to use if you want to on, um, on our website, dianantone.com, for free. You can download the tracings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be using the um, Kuretake set here because it's just an awful lot easier to paint a multicolour um, thing like this if you've got <coughs> colours already mixed up. And I've got here a little um, flower shape palette which I'm going to use for doing any blends that I need to do. So I'm not sure, I think I'll put that there maybe. I know I'm going to have to go over my painting but just to get everything in, you know, it's not always as easy as you might want it to be. So I might just um, wipe out that uh, paint from the last video do that and um, yeah so this might look very complicated but if you get the sketch and download it and trace it I think you'll find it won't be all that difficult at all and what I'm going to do I'm going to paint it very simply I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to um, do anything elaborate in the way of color uh, tones and shades and all that sort of stuff just going to paint it very simply like a uh, you know, colouring in kind of thing. And then I'm going to embellish it with pen and we've got gold and white and black and we'll be using that to um, 
finish off the whole thing. So we'll start off, why not start off at the top? Um, in which case I'm going to use my th uh, number five, yes, number five, and I'm going to paint the holly. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it as roughly as um, I do when I'm painting sort of, uh, what do you call it, um, pen and ink. We do it a little bit more accurately than that just because we're going to embellish it with stuff. So here, this is um, a poinsettia sort of thing, a poinsettia inspired flower, you could say. So I don't know, I can't remember how many petals a poinsettia has got, but it's somewhere in the region of five, I would think. Most flowers have five or something like it, don't they? And then while I'm on red, let's do the berries. And this is going to be a colourful painting, I, I hope. A sort of traditional Christmas painting for those of us out there who are traditional. I remember it must be now 10 years ago um, when things all started to go very strange. Um, we were, I went shopping for Christmas wrapping paper this was in England in, in the old days when I used to live in England. And <laughs> it was, I think I'm going to put another poinsettia in here. Um, I wanted just, I just wanted cheap wrapping paper. It was for um, presents for the, we, we used to run a school. We used to run a, a little sort of tuition centre, my daughter and I, Tamsin and me. And um, every year we used to do the Christmas tree for them. And we used to do a lucky dip and we used to wrap up little cheap presents just for them to, you know, get on the last day of term. And um, anyway, so I was shopping for, oh God, I don't know the last time I went shopping for wrapping paper. Perhaps it was then. Um, shopping for wrapping paper. And it was all black. We went into Hallmark and we went into all the other shops where they sell wrapping paper and um, it was the year of the black wrapping, black Christmas paper. It was so strange. Anyway, there we are. I'm just colouring in the, the holly leaves with green, as you can see. They'll all be covered up with embellishment when we're finished. So we're not too worried about how they look. And, oh, we need a few little leaves here. There we are. And then I'm going to, what colour shall I do with the pole? I suppose it ought to be sort of dark brown or something. Just, I'm not sure if it's a branch or, or what it is, but anyway, what it is, is something from which the, there it goes, goes down there, went off track a little, little bit, uh, from so something from which the stockings are hanging. And we'll just put a little bit of yellow in the middle of the flowers there, and I might put some more red in as well, just a little dab. There we go. So that's that's that bit done. And then we need some, I think some dark green ribbon, which is going to hang down to the, each of these stockings tape or something holding them I can't remember what I did in the end about that uh, wrapping paper I couldn't bring myself to buy um, black wrapping paper not at all okay so that's 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 that bit Let me put a bit more 
something in there. We're going to let that dry and then we'll go around that in pen. And now a slightly bigger brush and we're going to paint the um, stockings. This has got a sort of creamy coloured top to it. And then I'm just going to do some kind of um, some sort of softened down colours, sort of green. It's knitted, you know, it's knitted. And then sort of a bit more blue. So I'm mixing the blue with cream to give me a sort of ice cream kind of colour. Don't know if it's going to work. Pink, pinky blue. Oh, I don't know. Uh, a bit more dark green, perhaps. And then I'm going to put some beige on the heel, I think, shall I? And on the toe. No, I'm not going to put beige on the heel. I'm going to get rid of that. I'll tell you why. Because the mouse is going to be something like that colour. And we have a bit of red. And a bit more green. And a bit more red. And then the heel is going to be uh, green. Not liking that. I think we'll go a little darker. And sometimes, you know, you you sort of think, yeah, I'm gonna go darker. And you can, you can paint over. So make this green. and the toe as well, that's better. And I think we wanted a sort of turquoise stripe there, it seems to have got lost. When that's dry we can sharpen that up a little bit, but that's okay. And then I think I'm going to do a nice dark red on here. I've learned my lesson about light colours. Now these are bells you know, little ringy things, and I will put them in in gold at the end. And uh, so now we'll come in with some green, I think. go about that far down perhaps and then what should we swap to should we go back to red there we go 
and we'll see what happens with the white bits. We do a nice green toe on this one too. And then perhaps dark red heel. I'll fill those lines in later. Okay, just let that run a little bit. And this one, I'm going to do the top purple, I think. And pick up some nice dark purple. Yeah. And I'll do the heel also in purple. And what goes with purple? A nice dark red, let's say, perhaps. Could be. This one's going to have to be brightened up when it's dry because these are more the colours I really wanted. Sometimes it takes a while to get started before you really know what you want to do. And then you might have to go back and alter it a little bit. Okay, all right, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm just going to come back and change that a little bit. Okay, I have repainted the uh, this stocking and now I'm going to just paint the mice grey. And it doesn't matter if we lose their features a little bit. because we can put those in with pen afterwards. So we just go over them in grey. This is a nice little grey from the um, Kuretake set. So we just paint it in light grey, all the mice. And um, just going around their, bar their um, parcel <clears throat> They've got a little gift here to open, or they're going to open it. I'm not sure if it's actually theirs, but um, this one's very pleased because he's, he's he's just discovered that it's full of cheese, of course. This little parcel here. Full of cheese. We'll paint that yellow later, perhaps. Let me just put some little pink in their ears, like that. And uh, since I've got pink, we'll pink his ears as well. There's another mouse over here, peeping out. Another one down here, sitting on a twig, eating some holly. I think he's eating the holly berry there. And now they're all nice and grey. Paint the inside of the parcel later. Okie dokie. So now we need a um, slightly bigger brush. Let's paint the candy cane in stripes. It's 
another one over here. The beauty about painting like this is that you can take as long as you like over it. You can spend a really long time painting everything very, very carefully. But I'm not going to do that because, uh, you know, we have a sort of limited amount of time, really. Um, this parcel is obviously going to be red. And we will put some gold ribbon on it in a minute. Arthur, do not sharpen your claws on the furniture. And this parcel, I think, as well, probably should be red. And then we've got a nice gingerbread star here. There. And um, we want some we want some gold for the gold ribbon. Probably have to go over this with a gold pen to tidy it up a little bit. We'll put some blobs on there. Doesn't look very gold. I think I prefer the starry colours actually. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to dry it off. So I'm going to, I think I'm probably going to start at the top. Um, with a 0.3 micron pen or 0.2, something like that. And put some shape into the holly and the berries and the poinsettia or whatever, it's not really a poinsettia, it's just a red flower. Yeah, and I don't like to keep my lines too close to the drawing or the painting, I like to kind of wander off into a world of my own. But uh, if you want to be precise, you can adapt this painting to be precise, as precise as you want it to be. There we go. It has a particular look. It's it's my style. Not uh, not learned from anyone else. Just what's developed over the years for me. And uh, now we want to just improve the mice a little bit. Like I say, if you want to download the sketch, it'll be free on my website, lionanton.com, so just pop over there. We've just redone the website and it's looking much better than it was. I mean, it was never that bad. Tamsin is so good at this kind of thing. But it looks much better now. Things move on, don't they? You know. What was pretty good a little while ago is now not so good. 
There we are. And then cross the top. There, I said I would make that cheesy, didn't I, on the inside? What colour is cheese? Yellow, I think traditionally. And a box of cheese, yay! And uh, I think I'm going to try and find my smallest point one. That's not the right one. I don't know if I've got a point one anywhere. Have I got a point one? Point zero five. That's even better. Please work. Yes. Little faces, there we go. Little mouths. Okay, we've got one over here as well. He says, I, I'm keeping guard. I'm watching out for Santa Claus if he comes by. And I'll let you know. Or if anyone comes downstairs from the big house. I'm looking out just in case. And this one similarly is looking out on the other side, just in case. You never know when the people might come home, but my whiskers will tremble when they do. So I'll be able to tell you. This one down here being super naughty because he's sitting here. He's already found something to eat. And he's not the same family. He's he's a little dormouse or some or a little yeah, dormouse I think. And he knows all about saving up for the winter. There we are. He's sitting on a little branch down there and I haven't even given him a branch to sit on. That won't do. A little bit of holly. eating some, a berry of some sort. Okay, so. Uh, that candy cane. around the ribbon. And another candy cane. There's a present here, isn't there? It's a nice box, nice red box. <clears throat> I expect that's probably got a nice woolly hat in it or a pair of lovely socks, hand knitted by grandma. That's a nice biscuit and the bell. Which has got to be colored in in gold. So let's look at the gold. I've got starry colors here. They're nice and gold. Don't want all that water though. Arthur, you are in trouble today. You will be soon. 
There we go, That's some nice gold, gold bells. Might need to come back and reinforce the gold. Reinforce the gold here too, because the one in the Starry Colours set is better than the one in the Kuretake Starry Colours. Sorry, in the Kuretake main set. Um, okay, so now I'm going to try and put some embellishments on these things. I don't know what I'm doing. You know by now that that's not an unusual situation. That's the thing with painting though. This one needs lots and lots of gold and silver. Make a nice band there of gold. Band of gold, reddish. And band of gold round here. All I need is a band of gold. Okay, and Sharpen up those lines. Oh, it's raining again. You could do this for ages and ages because you've got all of these stockings to do. So you could look upon this as being meditation and um, just keep, you know, keep on keeping on. You could have, uh, yeah, that's going to work. You could have a row of white hearts here. And then perhaps a row, do them upside down. That's that's taxing. Hmm, that was difficult. And then maybe. I switch to the gold pen. The thing is, when you're doing this, remember, just keep on adding, don't stop. Especially if you think it doesn't look right, just keep on adding. And eventually it will look right, guaranteed. Because when you start and then you think, oh, but no, you'll think of something else to do, right? So I don't like those um, white hearts. 
So I'll fill them with gold and then they look different. So you think, oh, actually that's okay. And I think all we need to do here now <clears throat> on this one is just to go around the outside edge. And I think that one's probably done. It could be considered to be done. Just improve this gold ribbon here with the pen now. And now we come to the next one. really like that that color. I'll do that when that's dry. Okay, so now we're on to this one. And let's go around him with squiggly lines like this. And I think I'm going to grab some more gold paint. Do some flowers on here, perhaps, some gold flowers. Something like that. And then where we had our mucky mess, I'm just going to the really dark gold, paint over that. If you need two rows, two layers, always come back once it's dry. So everywhere where there was a messy seam, you can just go over it, join it tidily, or fairly tidily. Okay, um, maybe we'll takes up quite a lot of water, this paint. And also, of course, the brush is not very, doesn't hold a lot of water. Um, I think we better have some more flowers on the toe here. Put some diagonals on there, perhaps, and maybe some spots on the heel, I don't know, or whatever next. Okay, and now we're on to the last one.
do the same thing again. Where we left, let the paint touch. So just tidies it up a little bit. Doesn't want to be too tidy, does it? And then um, on, what size is that? Is that very small? So, yes, that's too small. Let's go for this, this one. We'll just go around the outside edge, like I said before. I think that one's too fat. Believe me, this is a very fun thing to do and it's very meditative and it, when it's done, it will look pretty, I think. And you can just express yourself. Do whatever designs you want, whatever you feel you want to do. Sort of trying to make like jacquard patterns, you know, anything that looks kind of embroidered, medieval, that kind of thing. The beautiful thing about these pens is they're just amazing what they will do. I'm going to try and do some spirals. I'm not sure if it will work on here. There you are. Go very quiet while I do this. A certain amount of concentration involved. There we are, that's that. And let's do some big circles and small circles just to do the heel. There we are, and then, whoops, wrong one. This bit you don't have to do if you don't want to. Of course, you don't have to do any of it. And indeed, you probably won't. But when you put a line down the side of the gold, it does make the gold stand out better. So if, if you can keep that reasonably straight. I just watched um, an old film. Remember Forrest Gump? Just watched that and the theme tune is going round and round in my head, which is a little bit... Uh, <laughs> preoccupying. That's an amazing film. Tom Hanks is so brilliant. 
Oh, they all were in that film. Make it nice and elaborate. Scallops and spirals and all sorts. So I think we're coming close to the end of that. Um, so we will put in a few little stars. Have I forgotten anything very important? Uh, not really. I mean, we could put gold up here on these leaves. I think that's what I intended to do in the first place, was to lighten them up with a little bit of gold and the flowers too. Something like that. And this as well was too dark. So we lighten that up a bit. No, no, I think that's about right. All we have to do now is write Merry Christmas in my best. My best handwriting. Uh -huh. One of these days, I'll learn how to write. It's not my thing really. But you can't do everything, can you? Merry Christmas. Now all we have to do is let it dry and rub out the lines and we'll be good to go. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. I know that was quite a long one, took quite a while, but it was quite a lot of fun. And uh, I think that would make a fantastic picture to hang up at Christmas time. Today, I'm going to do some guess what Christmas cards. Um, you know, why not? Christmas is coming and we all love painting these things. So you could also use this design for um, little gifts if you wanted to frame them or something like that. Um, what we're going to do, I've got three designs here that I've been working on and uh, they're going to be square and they're going to be, it's going to be a little church, a little cottage, sort of you could make it into a gingerbread cottage if you wanted to, and a little nativity scene. And I've just been online and looking it up to see whether or not there are pine trees and snow in Bethlehem. And um, it turns out they do have a snowy season when they could have up to 52 centimetres of snow in one year. So therefore it's okay to do a nativity scene with snow. Okay, now, okay, we have climate change and maybe it wasn't like that then, but you know, we can be allowed a little bit of um, artistic license, can't we? And they do have pine trees there as well. So that's what we're going to do. Now, um, I've got a piece of paper here, which is um, quite thick. I think it's 140 pound, but it might be thicker. And, um, this is ideal for making uh, cards with, but uh, what I'm going to do, because I don't want to waste all the backs of all these cards, I don't send Christmas cards, um, I'm going to cut it into four pieces. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to cut it into two pieces, and then I'll cut another one into two pieces also. Um, in order to get a kind of deckled edge all the way around, I do it with a paper knife like this. And I use the bone folder just for smoothing it down, for making sure it's a nice clean fold. And then I just do this. I, some people cut the paper with this. I'm not strong enough to do that. I need a bit of a, a bit of a sharp edge. This is ideal. You can get these on Amazon. They're pennies, and it's it's not sharp. You can't cut yourself with it, but it'll certainly cut the paper. And um, I don't know where this one actually came from. I think it might be from here in Brittany, but. Uh, a good idea, a paper knife, good idea. So now we've got two pieces like this and I'm just going to cut the edge off and make them into squares. 
I don't know if you want to watch me doing that, but um, where's my here's my my rough one, which I'll use to measure with. So I'm just going to draw a line down here, and uh, we can do both of them together. And then I'll use something to cut onto. I think like that, and I'll grab a ruler. Some people use paper cutters for this, but it's not really necessary to go to the other side of the studio to use that. So I'll do it here with a knife and a ruler. So there we are. That's two. And uh, I've got a problem with counting, don't I? I'm not quite sure how I thought I was going to get four out of that piece of paper. So we'll do that all again. as a pattern. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly absolutely perfectly square, does it? Um, but it's quite nice to do it. Uh, you could make, you know, obviously the whole card like this, but I was thinking it's nice to use a thicker piece of paper for the design and then to glue it onto a slightly lighter weight and obviously cheaper uh, card to support your piece of art. There we are, we can go over there. So now we've got four like that. Now, the next thing to think about is paint. And I've been trying out some different colours here, um, different mixes, because what I want to do is I want to do a background wash. And so I'm going to prepare the washes first. We're going to do three of them. Uh, I might do four just in case one goes wrong. And I want to do them in three different shades. So I want them um, to be one slightly mauvish, one slightly greenish, and one slightly bluish. And I'm going to be using my Kuretaki colours for this, these little dishes here. So let's just move everything over so we can see the paints. There we are. Um, so I'm going to mix up some a good quantity so that I've got enough and the base color is going to be this one here which is called indigo and that's number four from the right so we will put some indigo in each of these little dishes so indigo is going to be the base color for all three of these backgrounds so rather than rinsing out the brush in between each one, we can do it like that. And then I'm going to put some red into one of them. This is purple, they call it purple. Um, but it is a bluish red. You want a bluish red, don't go putting something like this in with the the indigo because you'll end up with grey. So you want a bluish red like this, this purple. And then we'll just test that, see. Yeah, that's the kind of colour I was hoping for. So that's going to be the background wash on one of them. Pop that over there. And then the next one I'm going to use um, forest green for this one. We did watch Forest Gump the other day actually. Saying Forest Green always reminded me of Forest Gump, so we watched it on this lovely film, isn't it? Um, very heartwarming, even though it's rather sad, but it's a very good message. So there we are, that's the green that we're going to be using. I might pop a little bit more indigo in there to make that a little bit bluer. I think that will be fine. Put that green one over here and now number three what did i say i was going to do refer to my uh 
original. Oh, I said I was going to make it blue, didn't I? Ha, there we go. So that's indigo, <clears throat> but I don't want it as bright as that because although indigo is a dark blue, it's quite, um, I don't know, it's not quite the colour I wanted. So I want to put some of this one in, which is more of a grey, so that we can have a sort of greyish background for that one, more of a traditional starry night colour. So those are the three colours that we're going to be using for our painting. So I've got them pre-mixed now, so I'll put these paints out of sight a little bit. These were my test ones, I mean, they're over there. An artist, if you are an artist, if I am an artist, that can never have too much space. This is definitely true. Okay, so there's some clean water. I'm going to make a, a square on the paper, which is going to be the background for the for the painting. <coughs> I'm not going to use a massive amount of water, and I'm not bothered too much about the edges, whether they're going to be dead straight or not. You can worry about them if you want, but if you look at it sideways on you can probably see if you've missed a bit. It's best not to miss anything, try and get it reasonably even. And then um, we're going to use the ready mixed paint to do the background. So we'll just drop that in and enjoy the fact that it loves to, it loves to spread and just let it do its thing. And gently, don't do this business, just let it gently move down. If you wanted to leave snowy area at the bottom, you could just leave part of it unwet and it would go down and make a nice snow bank. But uh, on this particular one, I'm going to color the whole thing in and go back to the top and drop some more in just encourage it to come down the page. And these Kuretake colours work perfectly well for wet in wet washes. They're not, they're not so much like gouache that they don't make a nice even wash. And it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of variation in the colour because it's not necessarily, you know, you don't need it to be even all over. But uh, there we are, so that's the purple one. We'll put that over there to dry. And then second one. Just pretend you're painting when you put the water on. Painting invisible ink. Lemon juice, that's what they used to use, wasn't it? Used to write in lemon juice on paper. And then if you knew you had a message, all you had to do was hold it over a match and the lemon juice would go brown and you'd be able to read your secret message. So that's what I'm doing. I'm painting a secret message. I mean, it's water, not lemon juice. Okay, so now this one's going to be green. So just drop it in, let it go to the edges. This is the lazy woman's way of painting. Suits me down to the ground. And just gently ease it down the paper. This is a bit like meditation. You're just, you don't want to rush it, you know, you're not in a hurry to get to the end. Because it really is, you know, a great way to spend some time. You could do a dozen of these, one after the other. Let them all dry and come back and do your trees on top and pop your uncle. You've got something to sell at the local craft fair. Okay, 
so just come down to the bottom. I'm not really trying to do a graduated wash. I thought it would be best if we just did a nice smooth, um, a smooth color there, more or less. And number three, the blue one, more traditional color for the sky. Although we have had some funny colors lately. Whoops, don't forget to make it wet first. It looks quite nice if you if you do an, a very irregular background as well, so not to go to square like this, but just irregular. But I'm not going to do that. That would be something more like this, um, which you could do, but it kind of, it won't look so good in the photo. So we'll just stick with the one shape. Think. Okay, so now it was the one we haven't done is blue. Blue always loves to explode when it hits the paper or the water. And we go back up the top and put a bit more in as well. There we are. And I think we will just let that sit and dry naturally. You can use a hair dryer to dry it with if you want, or if you're nifty and up to date with all your purchases. You could even use one of those heat gun things. But I think a hairdryer, you know, I don't know how many hair dryers we've got in our house. It'd be ridiculous to buy a heat gun. Hair dryer works fine. Actually, we have got a heat gun, but we use it for stripping paint off of fences and things. I don't think that would work. I think it might be a bit strong. We end up having a fire. There we are. I can hear one of my dogs barking in the background. She's annoying. She's going senile. There we are. Now we'll leave that one to dry too. And I will be back after lunch to carry on with the next stage. Okay, so the backgrounds are dry now and I'm just going to have a go at painting a little nativity scene. And um, what we're going to do, I'm going to try this is I want to put some, some nice thick snow working on the basis that that year, the whole 52 centimeters that they expect in Bethlehem fell in one night onto um, the stable where Jesus was. And uh, I just realized I did that slightly the wrong shape, uh, but never mind. And um, then I'm going to get another brush because I don't want to keep on washing all of the white paint off. So pick up another brush, a little bit of black. And I'm uh, just going to put a wall to the stable there and another wall here. And then I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that I've got another brush, a small one. Have I? This one will do, I think. And I'm going to get some nice gold. And it doesn't matter if it blurs a little bit or, or whatever, but we'll just put some gold inside the stable like that. We can always sharpen up those lines a bit afterwards if we want. So just do that like that. Then I'm going to go back to the white. And I'm hoping, 
hoping against hope that I'm going to get a something dashing like that. Could be better, could be worse. That will do. And then I'm going to go back to the gold and without too much water, you'll notice I'm actually concentrating on this. This wants to be fairly uh, fairly thick so that it shows up against the background. So we're just going to put a, a nice golden tree in there and then a smaller one on this side. I'm using starry colours here, but I'm just about to switch soon to the Calibri ones, the fine tech colours, because these are nearly run out. So there we are, there's another tree the other side. And then we will go into some black, and I'm just going to put uh, in a shadowy way, and I'm hoping that this gold isn't quite dry yet. I'm just going to put Mary and the manger. And Joseph there. When that's a little bit drier, we'll emphasize it a bit more, I think. And there we are, that's better. He always has a shepherd's staff, doesn't he? I don't know why. shadowy figures there. We'll see how that dries and see how it looks and whether or not we have to do anything to it. And then we need a star, of course. To be a fairly big star. But they're not easy to draw. Anyway, so that's that. And then we will go to the snow, which is going to be spattered, but not too much, just a little bit fine spatter. Then I'm going to go and get a bigger brush and we're going to pick up some There we go. We don't want too many of those. I will need to darken up various things because as you go along, things change. This needs to be a bit darker. And my figures in here also don't want to be quite so ghostly. So anyway, we'll set that aside to dry and come back and see what's going on when it's dry. Then the second one is going to be a uh, just a traditional snow scene, uh, I think. I'm going to take my small brush, not the smallest, but the, where has it gone? This one, I think. Getting in a bit of a mess here. And on this screen, 
in the background. We need some trees. Very quiet here today. I feel like I ought to be doing something else. You ever get that feeling? You're doing something and you think, oh, I ought to be doing something else. Happens quite a lot, really. Um, then we need, I was thinking, I don't know if this is going to work. Cottage. And another tree. Another tree. And then snow on the roof. chimney. Then we need some light in the windows, don't we? And the door, which is open, of course. Is it good? What colour cottage is it going to be? It's going to have to be green, isn't it? There's a bit of smoke coming out the chimney. And then perhaps and then maybe I think yeah I want to oh well I can put some white on there can't I to make them a little bit paler because they've got you know, snow. And I think, I don't know, I think something needs to be here. I think I'm going to make this tree much bigger. And then, I can't resist it, we've got to have snow here, snow banks.
and then We'll let that dry. Okay, so the third one that uh, that I'm going to do is going to be <clears throat> just a simple tree scene. And uh, we start off by doing the ones in the distance first in a light diluted colour. So it's the same colour, just with a little bit more water in it. And uh, we're just going to put them very simplified shapes in the background here. They will, of course, dry a little bit lighter than they look at the moment. And then we're going to go to stronger, stronger colour. And uh, let's put, let's put one in here. So we just draw a straight trunk like that. And then this is a fine brush, like I mentioned before, I think. And vary the length of the branches and the and the angle and everything else and just and then so we want a big one here so we we'll start with the needles going upwards a little bit plenty of spaces between them don't make them too regular and then certain distance down the tree they start to turn it's a typical Christmas tree. I know there are other different kinds of firs that do different things. So let me just go right the way down to the ground. A little bit of a line underneath them to show that they're actually standing somewhere. And this one, go here. I think I'm going to draw the line at putting snow on these. In other words, I'm not going to. Just hope that uh, some of the light spaces give the indication. It's only just started to snow. There we are. And now we're going to want to pick up a little bit of white. And I think we'll put a full moon up here. So we've had a crescent moon and uh, we've had a star of Bethlehem and a nice round white, white because by the time the winter comes the harvest moon which is yellowish where we are has, tends to become more whitish a bit of a halo around it which is kind of indicated by the way it sort of bleeds into the background a little bit and then we will want some stars and some snow 
So we'll pick up some of this nice white paint, which dries with a bit of a sheen. And we will spatter that all over. This one's going to have a bit more than the other two. This is a real wintry scene and where it's wet, it'll turn into snowflakey type things. So there we are.